Microplastics We are surrounded by plastic. Plastic is used in electronics, packaging, surface materials, paints, clothing, and car parts, just to name a few of the thousands of uses. The reason why plastics are used so much, and why their use continues to increase, is that plastics are cheap, lightweight, and malleable. But have you ever thought what happens to plastics when they are thrown away? You may have heard that generally, plastics do not decompose easily, so throwing them away can't be a problem. Let's take a closer look. During the past years, scientists have discovered that microscopically small plastic particles are accumulated in nature. These microplastics are under 5 mm in diameter, and they are found in waters and in soil. These microplastics can be synthetic or partially biodegradable and are produced by three primary sources. First, microplastics can be made on purpose. Cosmetics, such as makeup and toothpaste, may contain small plastic beads. Also, pillows, toys, and the raw materials for other plastics often contain microplastics. Second, microplastics are formed when plastic breaks down. For instance, the sun's UV radiation can cause plastics to break down over time in landfills and in water. Third, microplastics are formed by the wear and tear of plastics. For instance, paints and synthetic fabrics, such as fleece, will wear down in use, releasing microplastics into the nature. Perhaps surprisingly, researchers estimate that the biggest source of microplastics comes from car tires. When friction wears the tire down, microplastic is released from the tire, ending up in the water system. Especially on roads with high traffic, the amount of released microplastics is significant. In addition, the wearing down of paints used on roads is a significant source of microplastics. So why are microplastics a problem? Some animals occasionally mistake microplastic as food. The animals suffer from the plastic they eat, as it takes up space in their stomach and may cause congestions and pain. Some animals even die because of plastics, as it can block their digestive system or cause them to choke. Recently, studies have shown that also humans drinking water and food contains microplastics. That is not a very appetizing thought now, is it? Plastic waste is also harmful, as it contains toxic chemicals. Not long ago, harmful preservatives, flame retardants, and softeners were added to plastic products during the production. Microplastics may also absorb harmful chemicals from their surroundings. These chemicals may then end up in the food chain in the following way. First, a small algae eats the plastic containing the harmful chemicals. A small fish eats the algae, and a bigger fish eats a lot of smaller fish. The chemicals that were in the plastic end up in the fat tissue of the big fish, harming the animal and whoever eats the big fish. In addition to the health problems, plastic waste is also ugly, and there is a lot of it. The plastics floating in the oceans could fill up several continents. In addition to the floating plastic, there is also plastic under the surface. Microplastics are obviously a big problem. But is there light at the end of the tunnel? How could this problem be overcome? There are ways to make an impact. To start, examine the following. 1. Circular economy. Find out how circular economy can help tackle this problem. Look into the possibilities of eco-design and life cycle analysis. Young scientists are creating more environmentally friendly products than their predecessors. Find some examples. 2. Biodegradable plastics. Find out what biodegradable plastic means and how it works. Products can be designed to be fully biodegradable or recyclable, not so that they are thrown away after use. 3. Gain more knowledge. Find out more about this challenge and start discussing about it with friends and family. To tackle the problem effectively, we need to be aware of what is happening around us. 4. Community effort. What could you and your community do to reduce the production of microplastics in transportation and garbage disposal? How could you get your community involved in tackling this issue? Find out more and get involved!